Hi there, Tube Dude here. Welcome to my little video on uh, catfish from Hook to Pan. Hook to Pan, get it? Oh well. Probably didn't recognize me in my new uh, catfish COVID mask. Uh, some people say it improves my appearance. Don't know if it helps against COVID or not, but it uh, definitely helps with anti-social distancing by keeping a lot of people farther away from me. But uh, since we don't really need it making this video, I think I'll take it off for the rest of the introduction. <clears throat> Smooth my pretty hair down a little bit. Talking about introduction, uh, what does an old geezer like me know about catfish fishing? Well, I've been fishing for catfish for over 65 years. Caught my first one at age 12 uh, along the Colorado River down in Southern California. Uh, been hooked ever since, as the saying goes. I'm 79 years old now, there have been a whole lot of years in between, and during those years I haven't wasted them. I've fished all over the country, catching catfish all over in, in, in a lot of the, the better spots around the country. Caught virtually every species of catfish in the United States, and since I'm pretty handy in the kitchen, I've also uh, cooked and eaten most of them. So I'd like to think I'm at least somewhat qualified to talk about both the catching and the eating. And uh, that's why I've broken the video up into two different parts. Uh, part one, the nuts and bolts of catching catfish, tactics, techniques, tackle, uh, bait, all that good stuff. Uh, the second part will be on what to do with the catfish after you catch it, how to clean it, fillet it, uh, trim it, cook it, with the recipes. Uh, a lot of people will find that part interesting because a lot of people just simply don't know how to cook catfish to make it as good as it really can be. Now, the one thing about the video is you'll notice I go fairly quickly through a lot of the topics. And there really are a lot of topics when you're talking about catfish fishing. And so, some of them I might go over a little faster than you would like. And uh, you might want to know more. The good news is we live in the information age where if you've got a computer and a search engine, uh, the whole world is available to you and there's a whole lot of stuff on the internet uh, and in and YouTube and other places about catfish fishing and all the different topics that are involved there so uh, go ahead on until your head hurts and uh, some of these places you'll find out a lot more about a subject than you really wanted to know. Um, I had fun putting this together although it's a lot of hard work uh, catching the fish, cleaning them, cooking them, eating them, but somebody had to do it right. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Okay, what are we going to cover in this uh, little project? Well, as I mentioned, I've broken it down into two videos. The first will cover the how-to of catching catfish, and the second will cover what to do with them after you caught them. As I also mentioned, uh, I'll be going through some of these subjects pretty fast, and uh, there's some homemade diagrams, and caption photos that you might want to spend a little more time with and if so none of my stuff is copyrighted so you're free to pause the video to study them or to even do a print screen if they really strike your fancy. Now a lot of both videos will be classroom stuff with pictures and diagrams but there will also be some live action videos at the end of some of the sections and hopefully there's enough fish porn to keep everybody stimulated. Now let's talk about habitats. Catfish and their habits are greatly influenced by their, by their habitats. Water depth, current, temperatures, visibility and water chemistry, and uh, the available food resources all affect where you'll find the fish and how active they'll be on any given day. Now, how they take a bait or lure, how they fight when hooked, and how good they are on the table these things are also determined by the habitat and water conditions. There are over 3,000 species of catfish around the world, and uh, some are very small and of no importance to anglers, but some of them grow into the hundreds of pounds, and uh, a lot of them may be, even be fished commercially, as well as by the anglers. Now, in fact, uh, there's a growing fish farming industry for catfish, not only in the United States, but in other parts of the world. Catfish are prevalent throughout the United States. Uh, at least one or two species can be found in almost every state except Alaska. You even find them in Hawaii. Now, I've caught and eaten 
just about every species of angler important catfish in the United States and uh, from at least 15 different states. And while fishing all over the country, uh, I fish in just about every kind of catfish habitat you can imagine. Uh, these include rivers and lakes, small streams and ponds, and uh, there, there are a lot of different kinds of uh, small lakes and ponds. You've got community, city, county, golf course, private, farm ponds, just to name a few. I've also caught catfish from freshwater, saltwater, and brackish water. There are actually some saltwater species of cats, but I won't be talking about them in this video. However, I can personally tell you from personal experience that uh, freshwater channel cats can also be caught in, in brackish water. I caught several down in Louisiana while I was fishing for redfish and sea trout in the uh, brackish salt marshes. I've also fished everything from pristine rivers and lakes to some really nasty mud holes and just about everything in between. As a general rule, uh, the cleaner the water, the more likely the cats will feed during the daytime. And under good conditions, they might even become sight feeders that chase down live prey and more likely they are to take lures and flies as well as bait. The dirtier and more stagnant the water, the more likely the best fishing will be after dark and with smelly baits and also the more likely the fish won't taste quite as good on the table. Now, another thing that influences daytime, nighttime fishing is uh, water temps and uh, human activity. On some waters that get very warm in the summer and have a lot of boating activity, uh, catfish sometimes will feed more actively after dark, especially the bigger fish. Okay, let's talk about basic catology. There are several species of catfish in the United States, but only about six are of any size or abundance uh, to be important to anglers. First of all are the big blue cats. Uh, this isn't the record by uh, any means, but uh, uh, they often do get over 50 pounds and the, and the actual record is over 143 pounds. Next in size are the flatheads. Uh, the records on flatheads is about 123 pounds, but they do get bigger. Next in uh, size would be the channel cats. And uh, uh, the record on channel cats is about 58 pounds. But the average size cat uh, that I catch here in Utah is more, on, more likely in the three to four pound range. Although we do catch some over 10 pounds down in Utah Lake. Now the white catfish kind of resembles a channel cat, but it's uh, much more limited in range and they're also much smaller than channel cats. I think the record is uh, still somewhere under 20 pounds. Now the bullheads. Black bullhead, also called a mud cat or mudder, or yeller belly, is much smaller than most of the other catfish. Uh, I think the record's a bit over 8 pounds, but they, they average a lot smaller. Uh, the pesky footlongs in most waters are usually pretty easy to catch and they're great for kids or newbies, but many, they, they annoy the heck out of uh, serious anglers who are looking for bigger catfish. Uh, bullheads may be small, but they got big attitudes and, and uh, they'll go after the baits being fished for the other bigger species. Yellow bullheads are probably the least common of the bullhead species. They're found in, in different conditions and they're also fairly small for the most part, although the record is just over seven pounds. Okay, now let's talk about the seasons and times for catfish. Depending on where you live and what species you're after, you might be able to catch cats virtually any time of the year. And that's especially true for channel cats. But the bigger flatheads are they're kind of wimpy. When water temperatures drop below about 50 degrees, they sink to the bottom and just snooze until the water warms back up in the spring. The blue cats are found mostly in big lakes and rivers that remain ice free in the winter, but uh, they might bite, bite well even during a lot of the colder months, uh, as well as through the, through the warmer summer months. The channel cats, uh, they're found all over the country, uh, including where there is winter, a winter ice cap. The channel cat fat fans are really pleased to find out that they can catch them even beneath the ice. 
Uh, there's an increasing number of anglers in the upper Midwest that specifically target cats through the ice, and they do catch some big ones. Uh, true, they don't put up as much of a fight in cold water, but uh, fishing is always better than sitting at home watching TV, right? Okay, I've caught channel cats every month of the year here in Utah, and I begin by launching my float tube whenever I can right after ice out. That's usually sometime either in late February or early March. And as water gets oxygenate, oxygenated by the spring breezes, uh, catfish get a little more active and go on the prowl. But since water temps are still around only 40 degrees, they usually don't do much more than uh, roll when you hook one in that cold water, but they still fight better than some wimpy trout do even on their best days. Here's a limit of eight that I kept in February one year uh, when the ice opened up early at the South Marina Channel entrance uh, at Willard Bay Reservoir. Went through two bags of minnows and probably caught about 25 to 30 cats before I ran out of bait. It was a great way to start the year. By April, uh, the water is a bit warmer and fishing late in the day is, is sometimes often the best after the sun's warmed the water in the shallows a few degrees, especially along uh, north-facing shorelines. And uh, sometimes the bank tanglers will do better to uh, come down late in the afternoon and fish through the evening hours uh, when the cats are in shallow after dark under these conditions. By April, uh, now, once the water temperatures reach about 65, uh, cats will go into spawn mode. They move in uh, closer to shore and, and uh, search out uh, holes and uh, holes and crooks and annies in the in the vegetation and the rocks, and that's where the males uh, stake out their claims on the best spots and uh, invite the females in to lay their eggs. Now the males turn dark colored during the spawn, and they often show a lot of wear and tear from uh, fighting with other males or rolling around in the rough rocks. By summer, uh, the spawn is over and the catfish are feeding all day and in the warmer water of summer they really put up a, a good battle when you hook them and as late summer water temperatures get over about 80 degrees sometimes the daytime bite slows down and uh, you might even do better fishing after dark especially on waters that have a lot of daytime boat traffic and uh, this is when a lot of the bigger cats become almost strictly nocturnal now, flathead cats are widely known for feeding most actively after dark, and a lot of them are caught during daylight hours, uh, but uh, the more and bigger flatheads are usually caught after the sun goes down, and they also prefer live bait rather than cut bait or stank bait. We'll talk more about that later. You can always catch channel cats at night, and uh, sometimes it can be better than during the day during the same period, but I prefer to fish lakes with good visibility and sight feeding cats that hit well during the day. Uh, I'd much rather feed the cats during the day than the mosquitoes at night. This is a mess of cats my wife and I caught while fishing at night in the channel at the South Marina of Willard Bay early one year. I guess it was around the 1st of May one year. In late summer or early fall, water temperatures begin falling down below the 70 degree mark again and the cats instinctively put on a feed bag before uh, leaner times uh, they anticipate during the colder months ahead. Uh, fish are active then and they're pretty easy to catch and they still fight very well while the water temperatures are up. On Willard Bay here in Utah uh, they're a gizzard shad and these shad spawn in, in uh, the early spring and uh, the spawn is usually spread out with some of them spawning earlier than, than others so some of them are hatching later than others and the last hatchlings are usually too small to survive after the water temperatures drop below about 55 and we see a big die-off on this baby shad now the predators uh, including catfish uh, they love this stuff uh, they dine very well on these dead and dying shadlets throughout, throughout about the uh, end of November But it's still good good fishing for cats up to and, and after ice up here in Utah. Uh, we catch lots of nice cats through the ice at Willard. Uh, here's one I caught on a three-species ice fishing day at, at Willard. 
And uh, further south on Utah Lake, we also catch shats through the ice. Uh, the water is shallower and the fish are warier, but if you set up properly in the right spot, you can catch some big cats through, the, through, uh, through an ice hole. Now, here's a picture of a limit of smaller cats I caught one day. Uh, I actually set out to get some white bass, but the white bass uh, didn't show up, but the, uh, these smallish kitties uh, reg regularly smacked those jigs and worms that I was fishing for the uh, white bass. I didn't complain. You know, some problems are definitely better to have than others. Okay. Now let's talk about tackle and tactics for catfish. Uh, this includes the nuts and bolts of uh, catfish fishing like rods, reels, lines, hooks, sinkers, all that good stuff. And along with that, let's discuss how we use them, uh, either from a shore or a float. Now, uh, three basic kinds of tackle setups uh, used by most cat fishermen. Spinning gear is probably the most popular, but a lot of the big cat specialists now prefer uh, bait cast rigs because you can fish heavier line for bigger fish with more control. And then there's the good old spin cast rigs. Uh, this is often the first rod and reel uh, kids get, but uh, these simple outfits are still used a lot by, by older uh, cat fans too. There have been a lot of cats landed over the years on the good old Zebcos. There's no laws that say you can carry and use only one kind of gear on any given trip. I often use both spinning and bait cast while fishing from my float tube. And since it's legal to use two rods, I sometimes use one of each at the same time uh, for presenting different baits in different ways. And then there's fly fishing. Not many cat fans use fly fishing tackle or even know how to use it. And uh, catfish are generally considered to bite only on uh, funky bait, uh, not flies. But I've caught a lot of cats on flies, uh, both accidentally and on purpose. Uh, you won't be fishing for them with size 22 dry flies, but in clear water conditions, you can sometimes do very well on cats with big streamers, uh, boogers, or zonkers, something big and meaty. And I've had a couple of epic topwater days fishing floating hopper imitations uh, to cats that were cruising the shallows and slurping up bugs that were blowing into the water from the, from the shoreline vegetation. And believe me, a 10-pound cat on a six-weight fly rod is memorable. Always been a lot of cats caught on the good old cane poles. But uh, modern technology uh, has also produced uh, some other long rods made out of graphite or fiberglass. Many of these are designed for crappie fishing, but don't, don't tell the catfish because these rods work pretty well for them too. Now, if you don't have a fishing rod or prefer not to use one, there are always hand lines. Uh, you can buy them ready made, or you can make your own out of any piece of wood or tubing. Just wrap on some line, attach a hook and sinker, add some bait, and let her fly. One of the more creative handline setups I've seen is what I call a suds rig. Uh, it's fashioned from a long neck beer bottle. You hold the neck part in one hand and cast a retrieve line with the other. First saw these being used in a small Mexican fishing village, uh, but since then I've uh, seen them being used even around Utah Lake. When it comes to fishing lines for catfish, you don't need to buy the most expensive line. Uh, regular uh, uh, braid or monofilament will work just fine. Just be sure it's heavy enough to handle the biggest fish you're likely to hook. And uh, you also want good knot strength and abrasion resistance. Uh, catfish often hang out in dangerous territory full of rocks and sticks, and these can destroy wimpy lines. Also, catfish have sharp spines on their dorsal and pectoral fins, and if a cat rolls up in your line, and these, these spines can cut you or nick your line. You'll either lose a fish that you've got hooked, or the bigger one that hits on the next cast if you haven't taken time to retie. Now there's a lot of other higher price lines on the market, uh, like the fluorocarbons, uh, uh, some of the super braids, the fusion lines, unifilament lines, all that fancy stuff. But you don't need the invisibility of fluorocarbons for cats, they ain't line shy. But you might appreciate the uh, lower diameter and enhance the sens sensitivity and the strength of some of these super lines. Hooks are a big part of catfish fishing. Uh, the right hook can help you hook and land more cats. The wrong, ho wrong hook can cost you in terms of hook sets or fish lost after the hook set. 
A lot of cat anglers still use the old J hooks or octopus hooks, and they both work fine for standard baits and fishing conditions. The main downside is that they result in a lot of gut hook fish, so you need to cut the line if you plan to release the fish, or do major surgery if you want to recover the hook and make another cast. Now, more and more serious cat anglers are using the circle hooks. Uh, these hooks almost always lodge in the outside of the fish's mouth, uh, usually right in the corner, and because of the design of the hook, it usually stays securely hooked until uh, you bring it in and release the fish. Now, this makes these hooks ideal for set lines and jug lines and any other anglers that just leave the rods unattended for a while because the fish hook themselves by pulling against the resistance and uh, they stay hooked better on that type of a hook. And, now the whisker sticker hook is a specialty hook uh, sold by a company to, to use with their line of catfish baits. They work a lot, work fine, uh, but they work a lot like a circle hook, uh, but they're really not widely used because they are kind of a specialty hook. How do you want to fish for cats? You know, a lot of folks still just set up somewhere on the bank and chuck out a baited hook. And that can catch a lot of cats if they're hanging out uh, close enough to reach with your best cast. Along the same line is fishing from the rocks uh, of a dike or a breakwater. And it's nice to have some rocks for rod holders or seats, but uh, there can be a, a downside to it when a big cat makes a dive for a hole in the rocks when you're trying to bring it into the net. Now, if you're fishing a shallow lake or a slow moving river, you can also wait out to either to fish or to just to make longer casts to deeper water. Next step up is a float tube. Now, here I am on Utah Lake with a decent early spring catfish. Uh, I prefer float tubing for the ability to launch anywhere and fish in solitude uh, with the stealth approach. I catch a lot of cats from my floating fish platform. Dual air chamber pontoons are a step up from uh, float tubes for size, weight, capacity, uh, and propulsion with either oars or a motor. Fishing is pretty much the same, launch anywhere, fish in stealth mode. Kayaks are another flexible launch and fish platform, and a lot of kayaks these days are actually designed especially for fishing. I do get in a boat once in a while. Uh, but usually under protest. Uh, some of my boater friends just uh, need me to show them how to catch catfish from their boats. If you have a large family or want to take several people fishing at the same time, a pontoon party boat is ideal. Plenty of room and the cats don't mind. On the other end of the boat spectrum is a little full boat. Uh, the advantage is the size and weight. You can drive up and put them together and launch anywhere. And uh, the downside is you shouldn't take them on uh, treacherous waters uh, with a lot of wind or lots of big waves from the power squadron. Ditto for small aluminum car tops. Uh, they're great for launching and fishing on small waters not accessible to larger craft, but you need to stay within your limitations. However you choose to fish for catfish, uh, you want to be safe. I took this picture on Utah Lake, it's a, it's a small rowboat with six or seven full-size anglers and very little freeboard. Not sure if they caught any fish, but I didn't also hang around to see what happened if the wind came up or a wakeboard boat zoomed by. Uh, if that happened, chances are they'd all be swimming. There's an old saying that uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's also a lot of different ways to rig your tackles for cats too. The good news is they aren't usually too picky, uh, but sometimes uh, a bit of finesse will help you catch more and bigger fish. Just be sure that whatever you decide to use is legal wherever you'll be fishing. Some of these things that are legal and common in some parts of the country and highly illegal in others. And so always check your local regulations. Now, where they're legal, set lines or trot lines can produce a lot of fish. Then there are limb lines, bank poles, and jugging. And if you're using a rod and reel, there's a lot of different options for rigging bobbers and sinkers. Now, if you want to use a set line, uh, there are basically about three ways to put one off. Uh, first one is uh, to string one across the stream from side to side, uh, anchoring uh, the ends on one side, uh, one side of the stream. Second is to 
anchor one end of the, uh, on the bank of the lake and then to run it out into the lake to whatever depth you choose. And the third is to go out in a boat or other flotation device to a favorite spot and then just set up your lines uh, way out in the middle of nowhere with uh, anchors and floats. And you just adjust the lengths of your lines to present the hooks at whatever depth you want them and the spacing between the hooks. As this picture shows, set lines do work. And where legal, they're often used even by licensed commercial anglers. But other anglers also use them just to gather more fish while they're playing around uh, with regular fishing tackle elsewhere. And then there are the limb lines. Uh, as the name applies, these consist of tying your line to an overhanging tree branch and dropping a weighted and baited hook into the water below. And when a fish takes the bait and hooks itself, you can see the tree limb bouncing around. If there are no convenient limbs where you want to fish, uh, you can use uh, any old stick or other means to get the line out into the water. Just be sure you anchor it against a big fish taken off with it. Still another option is the bank pole. Uh, in this case, using a half inch scheduled 40 PVC pole to push into the mud banks. Uh, the PVC is very strong and flexible. Actually makes a pretty good rod and can handle some surprisingly big cats. Uh, this is popular with anglers who rig up a bunch of them more legal and go up and down the river setting up a line. Then they run their setups periodically to remove the fish and rebate the line. This shows a guy pushing one of the PVC poles into the mud, mud bank. And this shows a bunch of the uh, rods pre-rigged uh, with, with uh, hooks and sinkers ready to go. All they need is bait. Next on the list of rodless catfishing are jug lines. Uh, this diagram shows that you can rig them up with or without sinkers uh, using whatever length of line you need to get down to the desired depth. Now, traditional jugs have usually been plastic milk cartons, either a half gallon or a gallon, but they can be any kind of a any kind of a bottle or a piece of foam that will float and support the size catcher label to hook. Here's a rack set up with hooks, lines, and sinkers ready to be baited and tossed overboard. Again, make sure uh, you're not exceeding the limit on the numbers when you fish with these things. You can also make your own uh, jug line floats like these made from swim noodles. Uh, the main idea is once your jug lines are in the water, uh, you keep a watch on one of them to get busy and then you chase it down and pull in the fish. It can be a lot of fun and can keep you real busy when the fish are active. If you're fishing with a rod, you can accomplish some of all that by just putting a bobber on your line. Plain old red and white bobber will, uh, will work as it has for thousands of cats uh, over many years. But today there's a lot of other bobber options and almost any bobber will work uh, to present the bait at the right depth and uh, to single a bite when a fish climbs on. One variation on the use of bobbers is a, a slip bobber rig. Now this is great to use in deeper water where you need to use a longer length of line below the bobber. Uh, too long a line below a bobber makes for some tough, tough casting unless you use a slip bobber. The flip side of that is using a sliding sinker rig when you're fishing on the bottom. Okay, this setup allows the fish to move off of the bait without feeling the weight of the sinker. Although catfish are usually not too sensitive about that. And it also allows the angler to det detect bites better but again, catfish are usually not dainty nibblers, uh, more likely to gulp and go, and a slip sinker may not mean too much. One popular variation of the slip sinker setup is the Carolina rig. This was originally developed by bass fishermen to uh, fish big plastics for big bass, but it also works very well to present big baits to big catfish. The next step up, uh, the Carolina rig is a Santee rig. This is merely a slip sinker set up with a colorful float pegged in place between the sinker and the hook. Now this float provides both visual attraction and holds the bait up off the bottom. And surprisingly a lot of catfish prefer their bait a bit off elevated, uh, especially blue cats. One variation of the Santee rig is a dragging rig. 
and this is either used for bottom bouncing in a lake or for the lift and drop downstream drifting on a, on a big river which is popular in some areas. And then we have the high-low rig. This is a, was originally a saltwater rig for bottom fishing uh, using two baited hooks above a sinker. Works well for catfish, uh, allows you to fish either two different baits or two baits the same, uh, both suspended up off the bottom. If you want to fish without a weight, uh, fly lining we call it, that can work very well for catfish. Uh, works either fishing from the bank or afloat, especially for drifting around or slow, slowly moving in a float tube or a pontoon or a kayak or small boat. When I fish this way, I usually use the uh, line clip on the rod to hold the line while leaving the bail open on my spinning reel. Then when a fish picks up the bait, it pops the line free of the clip and the line goes streaming off the open bail of the reel. Now you wait till you think the fish has the bait well inside its mouth, click the bail closed, wait for the fish to pull the line tight, and then sink the hook. Uh, there will actually be a short video segment at the end of this section uh, showing the open bail technique in action. Now, there are days when the fish are touchy and will quickly drop a bait that feels unusual or has too much resistance. And there are times when the fish want to swim around with the bait for a bit before committing. On other days, they go up and go, and you can set the hook as soon as they hit. Last thing we'll talk about in this segment is fligs. Uh, that is my cutesy term for floating jigs. I've been making and fishing several of my, my own designs in fligs for the past few years, and they really work well for presenting baits to catfish. Like the Santee rig, they combine color attraction with flotation. But with a flig, the bait is attached directly to the flig hook and that usually results in a pretty high percentage of hookups on the strike and the hook usually also lodges in the corner of the fish's mouth almost like a circle hook the first big flig setup uh, shown here is a sliding sinker rig with a leader of anywhere from 12 to 24 inches uh, between the sinker and the flig and some days it requires a little experimentation to get it right depending on the bait you're using and the speed you're moving and the fish's activity level and so forth, uh, the fish will let you know what they want. Flig Rig B is a drop shot model with the flag on a short dropper a ways above the sinker, which is on a longer leader. Now this is a good option for presenting baited flags at a more precise distance above the bottom, either bottom bouncing or, or uh, drifting downstream in the current. And then there is the actual bottom bouncing setup using a three-way swivel and a sinker dropper or else one of the standard bottom bouncer rigs that we buy for walleye crawler fishing. Since the whirly flags float, you usually don't have to worry about them sinking down and snagging up on the bottom. Uh, when you stop or go slow, they rise up and then they pull down when you start pulling them forward and uh, they ride even with wherever they're secured on your line or sinker rig so if you secure them uh, two feet off the bottom that's the depth they'll ride while you're moving final way to rig a flag is for trolling and catfish will hit trolled lures now you can just pinch on a split shot ahead of the flag but using a bead chain trolling sinker uh, will usually help reduce tangles and trolling whirly flags baited with crawlers Minnows or cut bait is a great way to search out catfish over a wide area. Cats do respond well to the flash and vibration of the whirling blades. And on, on the right bait, uh, if you have got the right bait on, that'll, that'll seal the deal for a memorable munch. Cats love them. Okay, now let's uh, take a look at a couple of videos. You're going to talk about catching catfish with the open bale system. Uh, when you're open bail you can either hold the line with your finger or as i've done put a plastic utensil clip on the top of your rod and when you've made your cast and you put the line under that clip when the fish takes it and pulls the line out uh, then you see the line going out the fish is feeling no resistance you'll take the bait well and you can get them hooked hopefully 
Now, a lot of times I like to fish uh, with a whole minnow. I'll either hook them through the head or back through the body and around the spine, depending on the size of the hook I'm using, the size of the minnow. And then we just get it untangled off the rod tip here. Throw it about 30 or 40 feet out behind the float tube. Let it settle. Put the line under the line clip. Put the rod in the rod tree and sit back and wait for an inquiry. Okay, we've got some line running out off the reel here. Hopefully it's a fish, not a snag. Click the bail, let the rod come tight. And we missed it. No, he didn't. Goosed him and he's headed back toward us. Some surprises are better than others. <clears throat> he's got some pretty hefty head shakes. Yeah. See if we can get this fishy to come up and join me in the float tube. Come on, fish. There we go. I knew you could do it. Ugh. Got a little bit of weight to it. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Okay, this one did a better job. Got the hook right in the corner of the mouth. Fell right out. That's good. Get a good firm grip. Get the net out of the way. Get the bump board up. Lay it out. Man, that's barely a two footer, not even 25 incher, but sure had some attitude. Okay, grow up and come back again. There's probably uh, no aspect of fishing for catfish that gets more discussion than baits. Everybody who fishes for cats usually has their own opinions and usually their own favorite baits. Now, in this section we'll try to cover some of the most important points of using baits, flavorings, and attractants. Catfish have earned a reputation for eating almost anything and everything. As the old quiz show went, animal, vegetable, or mineral. That includes living prey, dead bait, and uh, bait that is beyond ripe. But you know what? Catfish can also be surprisingly picky. And on many waters, you'll catch more and bigger catfish uh, by using baits that are, that are the natural foods on those waters. And often, the fresher the better. Smelling bad is not always good, even for catfish. This section will try to cover most of the proven catfish baits. Uh, I've broken them down into a few categories. Uh, prepared baits, garden goodies, bugs, amphibians, crustaceans, and shellfish. And then there's also the sources of freshwater and saltwater. And after that, there are the various meats and cheeses and finishing up with soap. Yeah, right, soap. Catfish are eating machines. I've caught and released a lot of big old kitties with bulging guts, uh, wondering what might be inside, and in a lot of cases it's probably good that I didn't find out. During the late spring or early summer, uh, the, the bulging tummy might be ripe females full of eggs, but uh, more often those bulging guts are just the remnants of whatever the fish ate before you caught it. Here's one I kept and opened up to reveal a full stomach. No eggs here. 
and when I unzippered the full stomach, I got a really gross mess of fish remnants. Uh, no telling if these fish were eaten alive or found dead on the bottom of the lake, because catfish will eat both. The next picture is a collection of crawdads and sunfish I removed from several different cats I caught on one trip. It's easy to see what was there on their menu for the day. This is one of my all-time favorite catfish CSI picks. It's a, a dozen small frogs, all in the belly of one catfish. Now, this was taken early one spring just as the frogs were coming out of winter hibernation. There had been some shoreline cleanup and vegetation removal in the area, and poor little frogs had no place to hide once they came out of hibernation. Burr. Catfish are not dainty diners. Uh, they'll eat almost anything that doesn't eat them first, including rodents. Now this bowl probably ended up in the water during the, the spring mating frolic. They get kind of carried away sometimes. There's no way to tell whether it was dead or alive when it was munched, but it was definitely in the, in the innards of this catfish along with some eggs. Next few picks will show some of the baits uh, that I use most here in Utah. Uh, first is carp meat. Next is a chub minnow, which I use either whole or cut up. Next is a white bass. Again, I use those either whole or cut in halves. Last picture is a gob of night crawlers on a whirly flig. Now, these things all work, and we'll be talking more about rigging and fishing them later. <clears throat> Next on the list is uh, prepared baits. Now, uh, these include doughs and dips and a lot of other things. Some folks refer to these as just stank baits since they rely on powerful odor attractants to uh, bring in the catfish. Now these will work almost anywhere at one time or another, but there are a lot of clean water cat hangouts in which uh, the cats become strictly sight feeders and have a mo mostly uh, natural diet. Now, hazmat baits like these don't seem to work as well under, under the conditions where uh, uh, they're feeding on natural baits, and usually the fresher the better. Now let's take a uh, trip out to the garden to get some bait. Uh, lots of goodies for catfish in our yard. Worms are obvious, lots of cats caught on worms. But lawn grubs, caterpillars, uh, even those nasty snails are all eagerly accepted by catfish if you serve them up. But also the bugs that we might find in our yard, like grasshoppers, crickets, cicadas some years, and even those big hummingbird moths that flit around the flowers. Now, catfish love bugs, but uh, since insects float, you usually have to use some kind of a weight to get them down to the kitty, kitty, uh, the kitty zone. Next category is amphibians. Both frogs and salamanders have been used by bass fishermen for decades, and uh, it wasn't long until catfish anglers discovered that uh, catfish liked them too. Uh, they, uh, the catfish do love frogs and uh, they're young called tadpoles and they also readily munch adult sal salamanders and their larvae which are called water dogs. Just be careful whenever you're using any kind of frog or salamander that you're legal. Uh, more and more of these things are on the endangered species list and, and are protected so uh, don't don't use something that's going to get you put in jail. Next are the crustaceans. These include uh, crawdads and freshwater, and shrimp from saltwater. Now, don't go out and buy the highest quality, freshest crawdads and shrimp you can find. Uh, either catch your own or buy some that you can get cheaper or free if it's approaching the expiration date behind the counter of a seafood market. Uh, cats won't mind at all. And they're the shellfish, mollusks. Now, these include clams and mussels, uh, both from freshwater and saltwater. Some of the best baits for catfish in some waters are the freshwater clams and mussels you can dig out of the mud in the same waters you fish for the cats. And there are baits that are uh, specific to either freshwater or saltwater. And uh, for freshwater, there's a lot of different kinds of minnows that we can get many different species. Again, make sure they're legal to use because more and more of them are protected. Now in Utah I use mainly chub minnows, red side shiners, and fathead minnows. 
Uh, the baby sunfish shown are not legal in Utah, but they make great bait wherever you can get them and wherever they're legal to use. Some larger species uh, also provide good baits with their young, like the carp. Uh, carp minnows are great bait, but they're also widely used for cutting up the larger ones and uh, using either chunks or strips for bait. Ditto for suckers. Uh, the young make great minnow baits, either whole or in pieces, and the larger ones catch big cats uh, when they're cut up into chunks or strips. Well, here in Utah, some other parts of the country, uh, they're yellow perch. Now, as with most small species of sunfish, uh, they make great catfish bait, uh, either fished whole or in chunks or in strips. And the young of the year are great minnows if you can get them and they're legal to use. We also have white bass, white bass here in Utah. Uh, they're only found in Utah Lake, and that's the only place we can use them for bait. But uh, they're found in a lot of places around the country, also known as sand bass or sandies, and they're always on the menu for cats. Uh, bigger whiteies can be cut up into chunks, or they can be used whole. Uh, the small ones, um, uh, they usually happen uh, late in the summer of the year. The, they spawn early in the year, and by, by uh, late summer, they usually at least serve four inches long. That makes them a great size for fishing whole or in halves. Also on freshwater, we have the shad, and uh, the threadfin shad is widely popular for bait for all species all over the country, including cats. But we don't have threadfin shad in Utah except down in Lake Powell on the southern border. It's too cold in the winter in the rest of the state for thread fins, but we do have gizzard shad in Willard Bay, and uh, the downside is that uh, we can't use or possess gizzard shad for bait. However, they're great forage for the uh, predators in the lake. Uh, now, wherever they're found, gizzard shad do make great bait for cats, uh, wherever they're legal, and uh, smaller ones up to a pound in size can be used whole for big cats, uh, but you can also cut the bigger ones up into chunks or strips. Now, big cat specialists often use whole live baits, especially for flatheads. Uh, flatheads prefer, their, prefer live bait to stank bait or cut bait. Now, some of the most popular uh, whole live baits are bullheads, sunfish, small carp, small suckers. And really big cats will eat live baits up to two pounds or bigger. So if you want, if you want a big cat, use a big, big live bait. Now let's take a trip to the seafood market. Just about everything on display will catch catfish. Uh, just don't go in and buy the most expensive stuff you can find. Uh, first of all, there are some inexpensive species available, and, and uh, sometimes you can even get a discount or free on, on different seafood items that are past their prime if you, if you schmooze the guy behind the counter. Here are a few of the seafood items that are proven good bait for cats. These include anchovies, sardines, mackerel, squid, smelt, a lot of others, but again, depending on where you're fishing and for what size fish you'll be catching, you can use these things whole, chunked, or in strips. Next, let's talk about meat. Uh, first on the list is chicken. Most most catfish anglers uh, have been exposed to chicken livers, and a lot of them really like chicken livers. They work well, but they're they're kind of soft, especially if they get warm and you may need to wrap them on a hook with thread or use a small mesh bag. Now, chicken gizzards and hearts are tougher and they do work well for bait, but uh, some think not as well as livers. More and more cat fans are using chunks of the, the thighs or breast meat for bait. And these work well without any kind of enhancement, but uh, a lot of them are favoring doctoring their chicken nuggets up with scents like uh, uh, garlic or anise or or even uh, strawberry or raspberry. And we'll talk about using the Jello or Kool-Aid later. Actually, catfish will munch almost any kind of meat, beef, pork, turkey, or wild game, but don't ever go to buy a, buy a nice fresh ribeye steak and then cut it up for catfish bait. Uh, however, if you have any kind of meat that's been in the freezer too long or been left out thawing on the counter too long, uh, go ahead and serve it up to the cats, they won't mind. Any kind of ground meat will work, but you usually need to use a small mesh bag to hold it together. And you can use almost any cut of meat 
from any source uh, if it becomes suitable only for bait. Now, this includes the hearts and livers. These are really popular with the uh, uh, the trout line crowd down south because uh, they're really tough and they stay on and they do catch fish. The picture of the ham is only for inclusion. Cats will eat ham, of course, but a good cured ham usually keeps well enough in the refrigerator until it's eaten by humans. Uh, don't waste a good Easter ham on, on, on catfish. Then there are the processed meats, like hot dogs, bologna, salami, liverwurst, all that good stuff. Cats will eat it all. There have been a lot of cats caught on plain old chunks of hot dogs, but again, like uh, like chicken, a lot of cat anglers like to docker their uh, hot dogs up with garlic or anise or other, other scents, and like chicken, and a lot of guys are soaking them in jello or Kool-Aid. Spam, people either like it or hate it. I like it. So do catfish, but there's definitely uh, cheaper and better baits. Catfish love cheese. Almost any color and flavor, or any name. Some of the stronger cheeses, like Limburger, are commonly used in the uh, stank baits. Last on the list, uh, of proven catfish baits is soap. Yep. Good old ivory soap has been used to catch cats for a whole lot of years, and it still works. But in most places, uh, you'll find out you really catch more and bigger catfish on fresh natural baits. Now one way to uh, enhance smelly baits or produce smelly baits is by using scents and attractants. Some of these are extracts of natural food items like night crawlers, crawdads, and shad. Others are not as natural, but still have a lot of cat appeal. And uh, like anise, uh, aforementioned cheese, and garlic. And these can be applied to any baits or lures to increase the smell appeal. Now, the use of scents and attraction has an added benefit of also uh, masking human odors, or helping to cover up the smell of gasoline, sunscreen, or other turnoff scents. There's an increasing number of anglers who are relying heavily on the use of scent impregnated baits like the Berkeley Gulp uh, products. And these are available in several different designs of uh, uh, jigs and lures and in a variety of sizes. I catch a lot of cats on three inch gulp minnows, uh, usually pinned on some sort of a flig. And I always keep a small bottle of the recharge attractant to boost the flavor once in a while. And that stuff also works great just as an attractant on other baits, uh, like worms, minnows, and cut baits. It's amazing how many times I'll bring in a piece of bait that hasn't gotten a sniff in a half hour, put a little gulp uh, attractant on it, throw it back out, and get hit almost immediately. It made me a believer. Now, when talking about chicken and hot dogs, we mentioned that these baits are often soaked in Kool-Aid or Jell-O, both to give them a bright color and to impart a sweet, fruity smell and taste. For some reason, uh, cats really seem to go for this stuff, and uh, uh, the strawberry and raspberry flavors are very popular, but I've heard that also grape and cherry are other good colors and flavors. I personally suspect that the one color and flavor cats might not like would be the green stuff. Green jello is a favorite menu item here in Utah, far too common, and I'd like to think that even catfish might turn up their whiskery noses at it. I do. Okay, now that we've talked about baits, let's cover some of the best ways to put them on a hook and present them to Mr. Whiskers. Baits we'll cover most will be minnows, cut bait, and worms. Uh, rigging will include uh, plain hooks, bling beads, bobberhead jigs, and flags, which are floating jigs. After the classroom stuff, I will have some live action videos illustrating how some of these rigs really work. Now for catfish, I use whole minnows a lot. You know, about four to five inches is my favorite size. And one of my favorite rigs is a plain J hook running around the minnow's spine and pointing backwards with the hook point exposed. Cats usually take minnows uh, head first and rigging uh, with the hook this way makes for better hook sets and fewer gut hooks uh, when you're not using a circle hook. Another way of rigging a mid-sized minnow is with a collar hook. Now this is not as uh, 
secure against bait stealers as is the previous method, but it allows you to fish the bait in a more normal forward motion for those rare times when the fish are being a little bit picky. Now, some days uh, the fish respond, seem to respond better to a half minnow than a whole one, and cutting them in half also helps release a lot more scent into the water. But when you cut a minnow in two, uh, then you have to decide heads or tails. This picture shows a good way to hook just the head portion, and you can hook the tail portion with the hook around the spine as previously shown for the whole minnows. This next me method of one is one way of rigging a strip of cart meat on a floating jig head. Note the exposed hook point. Uh, this always helps with a good hook set on the strike. And here's a chub minnow rigged on a flag with the hook behind the head and around the spine. It's a good secure hooking method and uh, the hook point is barely exposed. Next picture uh, here is a small white bass rigged whole on a bait hook with the bling beads. Now note the slices in the side of the little whitey. This releases more scent also provides a good place for hook placement. This picture shows a lar larger whitey and a bigger hook rigged backwards. And again note the slices to reduce more scent. One of my other favorite riggings is with a bobber head jig fished under an adjustable bobber. Now this pic shows how I hook a, a medium sized chub minnow. And here's another baby white bass collar hooked and another slightly larger one with a double hook rig. Uh, having a hook both front and back of a bait helps ensure a good hookup uh, regardless of how the cat takes the bait front or back. As previously mentioned I often cut small white bass in half and this is how I hook the head portion. This is a good way to hook the tail portion. And typically uh, the cats like both halves but some days they seem to show a preference for one or the other. And then there's the fishing, uh, the cross-cut chunks of a larger white bass. And uh, these release a lot of scent. They're very good bait for cats. Notice the big hook run first through the top and then through the bottom with the hook point well exposed. Next is a picture of uh, some cart meat rigged up with a bait hook and some bling beads. And then a baby carp with bling beads. Small carp uh, make really good minnows, by the way. Now, this picture shows a catfish hooked on bling, bling beads. And uh, if you time it right, most of your hookups on plain bait hooks will still be in the corner of the mouth, just like a circle hook. Let's talk more about the barber head jig rig. Uh, this picture shows the adjustable float I use a lot and uh, one of my favorite bobber head jigs. Now uh, you can fish any bait on them but I use minnows a lot either whole or a half and here's how I rig a whole chub and here's a half and here's a silly catfish that uh, liked his food served on a bobber head jig. As mentioned I'll be including some live action video on fishing bobber head jigs and bling beads at the end of this segment. Last on the topic of uh, bait rigging is flags, floating jigs. They've proven very effective for presenting baits to catfish and here's one actually rigged for big perch but which also catches a lot of catfish. It's a chartreuse perch color uh, on a tail flag with a two inch chub minnow hooked up through the head. Here's a larger hole minnow on a fire tiger flag hooked sideways through the head and a still larger chup minnow hooked backwards uh, on a bigger flag. Note the exposed hook point. Next is a large gorilla flag with a half of a large minnow on it. Uh, this is really good medicine for the bigger cats down in Utah Lake. And then another tail flag with the tail section of a smaller chub minnow. And this is also a proven cat catcher in uh, both Willard Bay and uh, Utah Lake here in Utah. Another good bait to fish on flags is a strip of perch meat. Uh, cats love perch wherever they're legal to use. 
And there's another gorilla flag with a strip of cart meat. Absolutely irresistible. Oh, here's an elongated uh, blue and silver gorilla flag with a whole small white bass. This is very effective for big cats in Utah Lake. As is a chartreuse gorilla flag and a chunk of white bass meat. Oh, this is a gorilla, gorilla whirly flag with a spinner blade on the front and a big strip of white bass meat. That, that works very well for big cats. And then here's a whirly flag with a whole night crawler. Cats love it, but sometimes a silly walleye intercepts it first. Next is one of my more recent flag designs, a buzz flag. It's rigged with a whole large minnow for big cats. Of uh, the little buzz, oh, and then um, here's one also uh, rigged up with white bass rather than the minnow. That little buzz spinner blade uh, really calls them in. Last but not least is a gold minnow rigged on a, uh, what I call a pistol jig with a little propeller spinner on the front. That's another recent innovation and, and all species love it. And here's a gold minnow uh, uh, with, a, with a three inch swimming mullet uh, rigged on a whirly flig. Well, that's it uh, for the bait rigging, the classroom portion. Uh, now let's see some live action videos. Okay, gonna talk about uh, rigging up the uh, bling beads rig. Oh, bling beads because they got the beads on the line, and that it gives it a little bit of extra color, which surprisingly enough is attractive to catfish. Originally started using this rig uh, more for walleye and other fish, but uh, got a lot of catfish on it, so. It's kind of become one of my go-to rigs. Now the way I hook a minnow is I start back here, wrap the hook around the spine, and then make sure that the hook point is exposed on the other side for a better hookup. And I just cast out, let it drag on the bottom until the fish picks it up. Interested party on the bling beads. Let's see if he's any size. Feels like he might have some shoulders. Of course, this time of the year when the water is warming up, they all Punch give their waist uh, above their weight class. Yeah, looks like he might be a bigger than a pound or two. Guess I probably ought to get the net out if I'm gonna invite him aboard. Come on, little kitty cat. Come up here and pose for a picture for the folks back home. Yeah, looks like he's got a little size to him. And I got him scooped. Uh, up on the board. Okay. Now I can see that the the bling beads do work, by golly. And here we have bling beads and a piece of white bass meat. Let's see if something uh, takes a fancy to that. And it looks like we did get a fish on our bling beads and a piece of white bass meat. So, just about everything we tried today did work to one extent or another. Let's bring you on in here and get my beads back. And... Oh, come on now. You don't need to be 
be difficult. Thought you were gonna crawl in the net there, but you didn't. Now let's try it again. Okay, come on in. Crawl in the net, and we got you. Ugh. Now, gotta do it again. Up and over. Okay, let's take a look at this wing beads and white bass meat set up here. Recognize that? We sent out to the to the fish and got him hooked right in the corner of the mouth, which is the ideal place to do it. Look up here. Okay, I wanted to demonstrate the use of the bobber head jig. This is what the bobber head jig looks like. It's an ultra minnow head flattened and about a two out three out hook and then you can see it's got the adjustable float up above now i'm fishing in about three to four feet of water so i'm going to do the adjustable float so it's a little ways above the bottom just by twisting that on there you get the line wrapped around there and the float stays in place and then we hook the minnow several different ways but uh, I kind of like doing it uh, the way I do on the uh, bling beads which is to wrap the hook around the spine the fish will usually grab his head first and this is suspended with the hook up and the hook point exposed so there's a pretty high percentage of hookups on the strike on this rig we'll throw it out and see if there's anything out there that uh, wants to have their meal suspended. Okay, we've got a few on the bling beads. Now let's see if we can get one on the old uh, buzz bait flag. We'll hook this one around through the gills and around the spine. And again with the Hook exposed, so a good chance for a hook set. Those little buzz bait blades really spin. So we'll pitch it out there and see if one wants it. Okay, the second method we'll be using for drifting, dragging, slow, slow trolling for catfish is with the buzz flag for catfish, chartreuse with, chartreuse with red spots. And on that, we'll put a piece of white bass meat, which catfish seem to like. Use one heavy hook and hooked once through the meat. Usually when the fish grab it, they grab the whole thing, so you don't have to get fancy about it. We've got this one on a bait cast reel. And on this one, we do the same thing. We'll cast out ways behind the float tube, strip a little line off the reel, click the bail or the anti-reverse, make sure the drag is set, and wait for the rod to go jump. Big uh, buzz flag, and he took it like a minute. And he's staying down like he might have a little weight to him. Whoa. Yeah, he's uh, got some size and some catitude. Okay. Got a pretty stout outfit here and I should be able to handle him well. Get him up here where he'll crawl in the net. And there we go. Uh, yep, I figured that old buzz flag would probably wake up a couple of them. 
right in the corner of the mouth where it's supposed to be. Okay, now let's talk about uh, lures for catfish. One of the biggest misconceptions about catfish is they only eat dead stinky stuff and only feed at night. In truth, uh, catfish have pretty good vision and when they live in water with good visibility they are able to make a good living by hunting live prey like, like crawdads and small fish and uh, during the day not just at night. When they become active sight feeders they'll even hit lures and even flies. Now, over the years I've caught hundreds of cats on lures uh, many uh, intercepted lures being fish for other species, but there are plenty caught while specifically targeting catfish with lures. Now, sometimes I sweeten the lures with a bit of bait, but uh, a lot of cats are caught on, on lures without any kind of enhancement at all. Now, these include all the standard stuff, crankbaits, plastics, spinners, spoons. They also include uh, some of the more exotic new lures like U-rigs and floating jigs and spinning glows. To start off the pictorial stuff, uh, here's a cat caught on a pale perch finished crankbait. Here's one on a shad colored lipless crankbait being fished for wipers. And here's a chunky kitty that attacked a purple and chartreuse plastic twister being fished for walleyes. And one on a black and chartreuse plastic worm. Now, all these without any kind of bait. Here's a cat on a smoke sparkle plastic being fished for wipers. Another on a uh, pearl colored plastic shad also being fished for wipers. Now, here's a cat that slurped up a small plastic tube jig that had been sweetened with some crawler, uh, probably being fished for white bass. And another on a uh, blue clear sparkle tube uh, being fished for crappies with no bait at all on it. Now, in quick succession, here's a chunky cat on a small pink tube jig. It seemed like there's just something wrong about that. Another on a Roadrunner jig and a small tube. Another on a red and chartreuse uh, pistol pat jig with a little propeller blade. And another. Uh, there have been days when I've actually caught more and bigger catfish on these small jigs being fished for other species. Uh, than I did on the stout catfish rig uh, be dragging a big slag of, slab of bait. A catfish will also hit spoons, uh, either trolled or cast or vertical jig to resemble, resemble dying shad in the fall. Here's a kind of a blurry picture of a cat that chased down a U-rig uh, with gold minnows on it being fished for wipers. Okay, now let's show some flake picks. First one's a cat that took a whirly flig, also uh, dressed with a gold minnow. Another kitty on a gold minnow, uh, on a pistol wobble jig. Cats like gold. Next cat took a fire tiger flig, adorned with a crawler. And uh, this was probably being fished for walleyes. Next one is on a new color, which is the orange tiger flig. Uh, this is being fished for big perch and willard with a small minnow for bait. And a cool water kitty on a pink tiger flag uh, with minnow, also meant for perch. Next is a hefty kitty from Utah Lake on a gorilla flag with a smiley blade and a chunk of minnow. Uh, this was fished specifically for catfish. Uh, ditto for this next pick. Uh, this is a cat caught on a, a big whirly flake with a with a white bass meat. And again, this was designed to catch cats on purpose. As, as is this one that I caught on a big uh, chartreuse flake with carp meat. Now this last picture of a flake catch shows a double. I got on uh, lime green whirly flakes being fished with crawlers for walleyes. It's what you call double trouble but good trouble. Last lures we'll uh, discuss uh, for catfish are the spin and glows. Now these lures were designed many years ago for salmon and steelhead in the northwest and uh, later they've been discovered by other anglers uh, especially like walleye fishermen they use them a lot and more recently by catfish fans. Now these active lures are also known as winged bobbers. 
Uh, they float and the winds make them whirl wildly in even a mild current or when pulled along at slow speeds. Uh, there, there are a couple of different ways of rigging spinning glows uh, for catfish. One way is to thread one on a line uh, directly above the baited hook uh, using a bead in front to allow for free spinning ahead of the hook. The other way is a variation on the Santee rig, but instead of uh, pegging them to the line like you do with a Santee float, you use a bobber stop and then a bead to position the lure wherever you want it in the line between the sinker and the baited hook. Now both of these rigs work well when you're slowly drifting or slow trolling at less than one mile per hour while searching, searching out some catfish and the whirling lure sent out vibrations that reach a cat's sensitive lateral lines to call them in and, and the bright colors and the scent of the bait kind of seals the deal for a chomp. Now, I've tried making my own spinning glow lures, but I found them too time consuming and, and difficult and my answer was my new buzz flags uh, using a, a small four baited buzz bait spinner in front of the foam body. Now, so far these have proven to be a real good substitute for the spinning glows. And in conclusion, there are probably no baits or lures that catfish won't attack at one time or another. I've caught them on topwater lures being fished for bass, including big noisy buzz baits, but I've never been inclined to specifically target cats on them. But I just accept whatever they try to mess whenever they try to mess up my day by munching something unexpected and intercepting something meant for the other fish. And again, some problems are a lot better to have than others.